How is Rockstar planning on announcing Grand Theft Auto 6 with Red Dead Redemption Remastered and the rumors of Grand Theft Auto 4 being remade as well? We'll be talking about all of that in this video today and a whole lot more. So we know Red Dead Remaster is going to be a thing, and this also prompted fans to start asking, well, what about Grand Theft Auto 4? Grand Theft Auto 4 needs to be shown love as well. It's really in a similar situation, seemingly unplayable on modern consoles and even PC just due to how buggy it is. Someone even asking, do you all think the Grand Theft Auto 4 Remaster could also be a possibility again? And Tez Funds 2 simply said, no. Red Dead Redemption 1 was more meant to be the next project. Grand Theft Auto 4 was more in the air, which is really unfortunate because I do think Grand Theft Auto 4 is one of the best GTAs that Rockstar has ever created. The story, the setting, the environment, everything about it I think is incredible, but unfortunately it's really impossible to play in 2023. Even if you do have it on PC, it's so incredibly buggy. If you have it on console, you're still not being able to unlock its full potential. So there's really no great way to play it. And one of the reasons why it could be up in the air is because of Grand Theft Auto 6. Rockstar might have to prioritize what projects they work on, and they also probably don't want to confuse fans. If they're coming out with a new Grand Theft Auto game and simultaneously re-releasing an old one, that might confuse some people. As someone asked to elaborate, and Rockstar Games Insider Test Funds 2 said, their long-term plan was to expand to other non-GTA series after the Grand Theft Auto Trilogy Definitive Edition. This dates back two or three years ago. Red Dead Redemption 1 and Max Payne was eventually gonna happen. Rockstar and Take Two Interactive, their parent company, had a future laid out for Grove Street Games, all before the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition fiasco. For Take Two, it's not just remasters, but the mobile industry too. Have you seen Logan McGee's thread? Unknown to most, if not all of us, Take-Two recently acquired GameClub.io, which is now leading development on the Rockstar Mobile launcher. If Grove Street Games didn't fumble the bag, they would have been the ones leading the development. Grand Theft Auto 4 was more of a possibility, and that was before GTA Definitive Edition. I think the important question is, if this happens to be true, who's leading development? If it's Rockstar themselves, then it would be surprising considering we're getting closer to Grand Theft Auto 6's release window. But this expands to a further discussion of how Rockstar had been thinking about solutions and ways over the past few years to work on two or more games simultaneously without having to slow down significantly while reaching a major blockbuster release like Grand Theft Auto 6. If it's a new studio, then there's hope for more remasters. So what I think he's saying here is Rockstar might have to have acquired a studio specifically for remasters if that's going to be their plan, and if they want them to be of a higher quality than what we saw from the GTA Trilogy Definitive Edition. Because if Rockstar did that with Red Dead Redemption, and even Grand Theft Auto 4, that might be the final straw. Fans might never buy a remaster again. In fact, I think Rockstar is on the razor's edge as far as people spending their hard-earned money on something that's being re-released after what happened with the Trilogy Definitive Edition. And they also can't let that interfere with their main moneymaker. Yes, these remasters are great. Yes, they will make money, and yes, they serve a super nostalgic purpose, and also serve, quite frankly, as something to do before GTA 6 arrives, but they can't prioritize that over Grand Theft Auto 6, and I think that's what Rockstar is working on right now, finding out ways to not slow down significantly while they reach a major blockbuster title like GTA 6, considering we are also getting closer and closer to its release window. So just something to think about right there. That might be one of the reasons as well why Grand Theft Auto 4 isn't necessarily getting a remaster. Rockstar might have the capability to only work on one at a time, and they might have chosen Red Dead Redemption. Now, on the subject of Grand Theft Auto 6 releasing, someone came up with an interesting idea. They said, would it get to the stage where Rockstar would just create a Grand Theft Auto in the future that they just continuously update? Won't it get to the stage where games like GTA just take too long to develop and the graphics can't get much better? And he said it's always a question of economics, the reality that the developers have to cover their development costs somehow. Technically speaking, sequels of GTA and Red Dead Redemption are just expansions of previous titles. It doesn't invent a whole new engine. It's the same one, but a much better one. 
At the beginning, the source code is the same, but gets upgraded a ton throughout the process. The idea that somehow starting all the way from scratch will make a better game, or how people on Twitter complaining about sequels using the same animation, has been ridiculed by a 2000 article describing the same issue with software projects at the time. If I was Sam Hauser, I could release Red Dead Redemption 2 as an expansion or DLC to GTA 5. There are many ways I could do it. Updating GTA 5 game app on consoles to launch up the Rockstar Games launcher. You have to choose between GTA 5, the main game, or a new expansion. That is one way to work around the issue of having to upgrade the main game itself to adapt to the new engine version. Or have the new expansion be a separate game app, which is not that much of a difference from making it a sequel at that point. But in reality, I would never do that because there's a standard within gaming communities of how DLCs and expansions shouldn't cost more than the main game itself. So by releasing it as an expansion, me and the team would never be able to cover the cost of development. Having a single Grand Theft Auto title continuously updated sounds fun on paper, but I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes the one idea that the community regret even suggesting. Then years later, the community would prefer sequels to be a thing again. Because think about how would Rockstar and Take-Two Interactive cover the cost. They aren't going to release free updates indefinitely, while cost of development keep increasing. You're basically inviting more microtransactions, more shark cards, more GTA Plus, and maybe battle passes. GTA Plus members with early access to newer map expansions, playing ads during loading screens, could even be a thing. Now, one of the features that Rockstar has allegedly been experimenting with in GTA 6 Online is the addition of blockchain technology and specifically being able to take digital objects from GTA 6 and possibly give you real life awards and items in exchange. Now, the whole idea of taking digital objects from video games and putting them somehow in the real world has been a major trend this year, and so far, no company in my opinion has really been able to do it right. So if Rockstar does go ahead and implement this, I really hope that they actually do it correctly and make it actually something useful that people would want to participate in both virtually in GTA 6 and in the real world. In my opinion, something even as simple as awarding people some type of coupon to let's say McDonald's for completing a time trial mission during one of the weeks in GTA 6 Online is a perfect reward and I think that is a great way for Rockstar to kind of merge the physical world with the virtual one in GTA 6. So the whole blockchain thing is really up in the air at the moment. Again, we really don't know whether Rockstar is actually implementing this into GTA 6, but we do know that it was tested at one point or another. And if you want to spend a little more time reading into this, there are further articles that you can find online. However, that is pretty much the main point of everything. Now, another improvement that we are expecting Rockstar to make foundationally to GTA 6 is something that I discussed on this channel before, so I'll make it quick, but it is still something really, really important, not just to GTA 6, but in my opinion, the future of video games in general. Now, there are two main ways that Rockstar will very likely implement AI into GTA 6. Both of them have to do with NPCs, and the first one is just NPCs walking around in the world, and the second one is NPCs in vehicles. Now these are both really important parts of any open world game, but especially a game like GTA 6, and what this means for us as players is that interactions with NPCs, both on the road and just walking around, are going to be way more realistic. In addition, it has been rumored that Rockstar is going to take the same conversation system that they introduced in Red Dead Redemption 2 and implement that same system into GTA 6. So if this is in fact true, that means that you'll be able to go up to any NPC in the game and have either a positive or negative conversation with them, which in my opinion makes the game a ton more realistic. If you haven't already played Red Dead Redemption 2, I definitely recommend it going ahead and checking it out. But if you don't want to play it for whatever reason, you can also see some awesome videos on YouTube of the system. It's really cool. Rockstar really innovated a lot on it. And I think that it would be a good use of space in GTA 6. 
In terms of driving in GTA 6, I really hope that the AI does get a little bit of an improvement. I think the AI in GTA 5, or actually the lack thereof, is a little bit of a downside because as soon as you crash into a vehicle, or as soon as you kind of slow down and just start interacting with the vehicles on the road, you can really tell that they're kind of on these virtual rails, and if you knock them off track, they're pretty much not going to come back. So I really hope that Rockstar does innovate more on just the traffic and the overall NPCs, both driving and walking.